Today, we are gonna take a look at the Blue Eddy AC70. This is one of the newer power stations from Blue Eddy, and there is a lot to like about it, and there's a few things that could be improved. So, let's dig in. Now, I've been using the EB55 for a while, and we have loved this unit. It, it's been really good, uh, has some cool features, the folding handle, it's got a light on the back, the nice display screen. I mean, it's got all the basic things that you would want. It's got wireless charging on top for some phones. Um, but uh, there were a few things that I wasn't so thrilled. There was no app to control it. The screen only showed you these bars on here that really, they didn't give you a real indication of how much charge was left in here. It's only in 20% increments. So do you have 1%? Or do you have 20% left? You had no way of knowing. So the AC70 is supposed to take care of all this stuff, or we'll at least see how much it does. Now, the difference being the EB55 is 500 watts and the AC70 is 768 watts. And you can see it's a little bit wider, it's a little bit taller, and uh, I think it's pretty much yeah, it's almost identical on the width. So it's, it's a little bit bigger, still has a nice flat top on it. The handle is now integrated into it instead of a pull-up. There's some people that said this was fantastic. And I'm like, I, I don't know. You know, it's, when you lift it, it, it it's gonna rotate in your hand. With the EB55, because the handle's in the middle, you lift up and it stays flat. I, I don't know. It, it doesn't bother me, but to say that this is a, you know, what some YouTubers have said, this is a great upgrade. I don't, I don't know. It's a change, uh, but I'm, I'm really neither, you know, big or, or opposed to it. On the front here, we have our input power, uh, DC input, so XT60 port. We have the standard cigarette lighter style 12 volt port. We got two USB A's and two USB C's and two 110 grounded ports. So that's an improvement from here where we had two non grounded and two grounded and um, four USB A's and one USB C. So there's a few more options on the AC70. On the side here, we have our power to charge it and a grounding port over here. On the back, there's no light like there was on the EB55. Over here, we have this built-in light. Never used it, so <laughs> not, you know, okay, that's fine. And uh, that's it, there's really, Nothing else to the box here. Uh, we can turn it on, it powers up. Now, this is where things start getting real for me. First off, not only do you have a nice display telling you the input and output wattage all the way across the board from the 110s, the USBs, the AC, the, the DC output, and the input, you also have a gauge right in the middle. You have a visual representation of how much power is left, just like the EB55, these rings around here. You have an actual numeric representation. So right now it says 100%. So that changes at 1% incre uh, intervals. And then on the bottom, you have an estimated amount of runtime left. So based on the current usage, it will estimate how long it can maintain that. So you gotta be a little bit careful in how you manage that expectation, right? So let's say our ISCO VL45, which is our test unit that we use for long-term testing, pulls 40 watts of power. Well, 40 watts of power on this, using our uh, time estimation tool that we have, is gonna give us something like 19 hours of runtime, okay? Well, that's 
that's fine. 19 hours of runtime on a refrigerator is not bad. However, the refrigerator doesn't run continuous for 19 hours. It cycles. It goes down to about 34 degrees, the compressor turns on, it gets up to about 36 degrees, the, t the condenser turns off. And then based on the efficiency of the refrigerator, how long does it take to go from 36 to 34? Well, it's going to take days, okay? It's not going to be 19 hours, it's going to be days of running a refrigerator. So while that refrigerator pulls 40 watts, it only pulls it for a fraction of an hour. So, you know, so you're going to get a lot more life out of it. If you have something that's continuously drawing power, like a, a diesel heater, right? So a diesel heater may run at 15 watts, but it's continuous. And in that case, you're probably going to get more like 19 hours out of this because it's a lower wattage and it's continuous. So you'll be able to estimate that pretty easily on the front because it's not stopping. All right, the app um, is very cool. It works, but uh, we're going to talk about a downside of that down the road because there are two things that I think keep this from being the perfect power station. It's only two and they're not bad, but there are two things I wish could be improved on here. Now, we go back and turn this thing on and there are a number of settings inside the unit that we can adjust for different operations. Uh, there's a turbo or a charging mode. There's three different charging modes. There's standard, turbo, and silent. So each one is going to take a different amount of time. So anywhere from like two hours to maybe four hours to fully charge this based on the charging mode. Now, I keep it on standard. It's gonna be a little bit louder. The fan's gonna run a little bit more, but it's gonna charge it at a reasonable pace. It's gonna take a few hours to charge it, uh, but it's gonna be the safest on the batteries. Well, maybe not, I guess silent may be the safest on the batteries, but it's gonna be, it's not gonna put a, a drain or a, it's not gonna put a bad load on the batteries by trying to charge them too fast. Turbo will charge them faster, but it will hurt the batteries over time to charge them on turbo. Silent is gonna be a slower charge, but the fan's not gonna run. So depending on what your needs are, you can determine how you want it to charge. Again, for me, this is often inside of our Jeep in the back, and with it on the standard mode with the fan running, we don't hear it. It's just not that loud. So I'm just gonna keep it on standard for the time being. Now the screen keeps turning off because there's, there's no load on it at the moment. So probably had to plug, plug something in to keep it from turning off. Um, on the output, let's talk about the uh, cigarette lighter port here or the 12 volt port. Now this is rated for 10 amps and a diesel heater, most of them will actually end up pulling about 10.5 amps on startup. And for the, a lot, I don't know if it's the majority, but a lot of power stations out there will simply go into a trip or overload mode when trying to fire up a diesel heater. The EB55 and the AC70 both fire up our diesel heaters with no problem. We've got several different brands, we've tested them all, and they all work properly with either the EB55 or the AC70. So I do like the fact that this does not go into an overload mode in that situation. Now on the 110 ports here, now these by default are rated to about a thousand watts. Now that's probably going to be more power than most people are going to want to run on a power supply or battery, right? I, I don't know why I would ever plug some appliance or something in that would draw that much power, but you can. Now, if you need to run something that's between 1,000 and 2,000 watts, then you're need to go, going to have to go into the settings either manually on the screen here or via the app and turn on the uplift power mode so it can support that uh, higher uh, wattage draw. Uh, it's only temporary. You, you don't want to run something at 2,000 watts. You're also just going to burn through battery like freaking mad. So I don't recommend doing that. Um, 
if you need that, get a generator. I mean, seriously, this a, power, a battery, it should not be running something that's pulling 2000 watts, but it can. Now, I did mention there were two ways to adjust settings in there. With the power turned on, if we hold the DC and AC power, we go into a settings mode and we can scroll through the different settings. It's not overly clear what they are. Like this says P03, P04. So you actually have to look up in the manual to see what those settings are for. However, if you use the app, it's much easier. And uh, I think they did a good job on the app. It, it works really well. You can have multiple devices in there. So here's the Blue Eddy app. Of course, there's a little ad, gives us current conditions. We can add devices, manage devices. Uh, but here's our AC70. And we can see it's at 100%. I have the DC and AC on, which we can confirm here. We can go into some battery information, see what our, our discharge rate is at, go into our settings here, pull up the user manual. We can share the device with other people to have control over it. We have our charging mode, standard, silent, or turbo. Our power lifting mode, we can turn on or off. The eco mode, we can change to different settings here based on what we need. And now you see I have DC Eco turned off. Now the reason why was because I was running our refrigerator on it. And as I mentioned earlier, the refrigerator will cycle. It doesn't just run 40 watts 24 seven. It's gonna pull 40 watts and then essentially turn off and hardly draw any power other than the display on the screen, which takes almost nothing. So when that happens, after a period of time, with Eco turned on, this will turn off because it doesn't see enough power draw. So if you're gonna run a refrigerator for an extended period of time, make sure you turn the DC Eco off so that the AC70 doesn't turn off. So nice little tip there. Uh, automatic sleep timer, firmware upgrade. So if we go into firmware upgrade, actually right now we can see that there is an upgrade available. I don't know what that upgrade does. I couldn't find it on their website and um, it doesn't say here in the app. So I didn't want to do a firmware upgrade before uh, finishing the review, but I wanted to show you that it, it is possible in here, which is kind of cool. Um, and we can see the, the different statuses. So I, I do like the app. Now, all that being said, this thing has been great. It's way more power. It's not way more power, but I mean, you're going from 500 watts to 768 watts. So this definitely has more power, which is nice. So on a, a longer trip, this is gonna do us just well. Now let's talk about our testing that we do. So we had um, the unit inside of a bedroom that would get between 65 and about 68 degrees, and we connected it to our Iceco VL45. So let's go take a look at how we did that actual setup. For our long-term battery test, we've got the Blue Eddy AC70 right here, connected to our Iceco uh, VL45, and it has a case of Monster Energy drinks and a half gallon of apple cider in it. So it's uh, probably 50% full, which is, I think, a good test here. And we can see we're down to 2%. We've got a red blinking icon on here. And it says the time left is 3.8 hours. We'll zoom in on that. We'll come over here. And we can see that the refrigerator is on. It's currently at 34 degrees. The temperature is set for 36 degrees. So that's what we're trying to maintain. So right now we can see that the condenser is actually running. And then what we did is we started the test at a specific time. And now that we're getting close to the end, I've been running a Blue Eddy EB55 with a DJI Action 4 on top doing a time lapse. So every five seconds, we're getting a photo. So when this thing finally turns off, 
we'll be able to know within five seconds of what time it turned off so we can get a pretty exact time of how long the AC70 ran the refrigerator for. Now the ambient temperature in this room has stayed constant at about 65 to 68 degrees. And um, so it's a good spring, fall type of weather conditions. It's not super hot, it's not super cold. It's just a good uh, about 30 degree difference in the ambient temperature. Okay, what were our results? Well, it ran that refrigerator in, in those conditions. Now, granted, if you're in 80, 90 degree temperatures, your mileage may vary. If you're in 30 degree conditions, you may get more battery life out of it. But I wanted to have a good middle ground, right? Kind of an average. That's why we put it in that room that's gonna be 65 to 68 degrees. Unfortunately, this is the middle of winter in Colorado. It's hard to get a room up above that. But given those conditions, we managed 74 hours and 27 minutes running that refrigerator. So over three full days of running that fridge with the AC70. So that's, that's pretty phenomenal. I have run the diesel heaters for tens of hours, 10 hours, 15 hours, 18 hours, and have not run out of battery on this thing. So this is a great unit for overlanding and camping. I think it's got the power output that you need for those types of situations where you, know, you may be parked for two or three days. This is gonna handle the job a bit better than the EB55. Okay, there's all the pros. It's a great unit. We love this unit. It is our absolute go-to unit now. There are two things, two things that I think keep it from being absolutely perfect. Let's go back to the app, okay? On the screen here, we have the, all the different power inputs and outputs. We have that in the app. We have the estimated, or we have the amount of battery left. That's great. We can see that in the app. On the bottom, we have the estimated runtime of the battery left on the screen, not in the app. Why not? I mean, it should, it should basically mirror this display. That's the only thing missing from here is how much runtime is left on the battery. I would love to see that in the app. It's on the screen, it should be here. Okay, that's the trivial one. Let's talk about my pet peeve when it comes to 12 volt power. And that's this guy right here, the 12 volt port. Now, for those of you who are probably younger than me, probably younger than 50 years old, you may not know that this port was not designed for just putting out 12 volt power. It was designed for cigarette lighters in a car. You would push them in, it would heat up, it would pop out, and you would light your cigarette in your car. So that said, it was designed so that the unit that you put in there would literally damn near pop out. This is not a very good connection. This should never have been become a standard for 12 volt power, but it did because of cars. Every car still made has this port in it. So it does make sense to have this particular port. The problem is we have had a diesel heater turn off in the middle of the night because the plug worked its way loose. We've had a refrigerator in the back of our Jeep just stop working because the plug worked itself loose from here. So while I understand that there are a bajillion devices that have that plug on there, so this port is needed, there's a better option. Or I would say a second option. Along with this, and I don't actually care if you eliminate this, but I want to see that small Anderson plugs on power supplies. There's another company that's doing it now, and I totally applaud them for that. But Blue Eddy, if you added the, the mini Anderson plugs on here, you would have an absolute winner. The reason why I like the Anderson plugs, they're small. They don't stick out as much 
as most of the 12 volt plugs. They click into place so that there's really no harm or no fear that they're going to pull out when you're just rocking down a trail and having this other one just work its way loose. So Anderson plugs, this would be the perfect unit. Because of that, because this is the only type of 12 volt plug on here, I'm gonna have to say this is almost perfect. It's not perfect, but it's damn near there. Summary, I think this is a great unit. It is $499 right now on Blue Eddie's website. And I don't think you can go wrong. I don't think there's another unit out there in this size category that's as good as this. There may be some cheaper deals out there. There may be ones that, ooh, it includes a waterproof backpack. Why do I need a backpack for a power supply? I'm not going hiking with the thing, right? I, I use these to run our fridges, our heaters, my CPAP machine. I use these all the time and the, they, they work great. Having a larger battery, very cool. I love that. The, the better display on here, big improvement over the EB55. The app control on here, way better than the EB55. Sure, we lost the wireless charging on here. I don't care. Don't really use it. Doesn't matter to me. The handle, take it or leave it. I don't really care one way or the other. Doesn't bother me that the handle's like this. The other options that are on here, XT60 plug for power input, I think is great. That allows you to just hook up anything. It does come with a set of wires that can plug into a lot of different type of solar panels, including Blue Eddie's own solar panels. So you can plug solar in here. You can uh, plug AC power into the side. So you can have two different charging sources going into this thing at the same time. So you could have a, a big solar panel and the side. The side one, the AC power one, will charge us at 400 watts. So you can get this thing going up to like 600 watts of charging, which will charge this thing pretty damn fast. So I think everything that they did in that $500 price point makes this a fantastic unit. We highly recommend it. Um, I really can't say much more about it. it it's, a, it's a great unit. But I guess while we're talking, please add more USB ports. I mean, there's four. Double this. Seriously. I Make it four USB A's, four USB C's, or eight USB C. I don't care. Add more USB ports. That's a major thing that people are using this for is for charging drone batteries, for charging cell phones, for charging all kinds of USB devices. So while I can live with this, and we usually don't have a problem with charging USB devices because we charge them while we're driving, I would love to see double the amount of USB ports. Want to see an Anderson connect connection on here. And if they could add the uh, time remaining to the app, absolutely perfect unit. So thanks for watching, everybody. Carry with Trail Traveler. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the trails.